Hi, I'm Eric Schoenfeld, co-editor of TechCrunch. And I'm John Biggs, editor of Crunch Gear. And this is Fly or Die. So, so what have we today? What do we have today? Today we've got three apps. We're going to look at the new TweetDeck for the iPhone, mm -hmm. brand, new, uh, brand new app built from scratch. We're going to look at sound tracking, which is a hot uh, music app that lets you share your music with your uh, social networks. Mm -hmm. And Zapped, which is an easy way to create websites right from your phone. So TweetDeck has been around for a while now. This is a brand new version. Right. Uh, it looks a lot like Windows Mobile or Windows Phone 7, wouldn't you agree? Well, not really. There's a, there's a few gestures like this, uh, that diagonal swipe that I really like, um, that that are reminiscent of, uh, of of a gesture in Windows Phone 7. But what they've done is they really stripped down the whole UI. Everything that doesn't need to be there is taken away, and things appear. Uh, as you need them, and it's a little bit confusing at first uh, if you're used to, you know, other apps that have more cues. Like even like the time, like in the regular Twitter app, you'll see what time each tweet was, and I didn't really get used to this. But actually, as you scroll down, it's subtle, but the time changes up here. You've got you know a time bar, and if you want to get to the top, you got to actually hit the hit the time, uh, and you can get to the top. Things that you wouldn't really know. Until you kind of really fool around with the app and, and, and mm -hmm. you play with it. But this is really for power users. TweetDeck is really about power users. And so they like all of these little Easter egg features. Um, you know, another nice thing about it is that you get a unified stream with not just Twitter, but you get your Facebook stream, and I think you can even get, have your four, four square uh, check ins. Mm. Uh, I've been using it for a couple weeks, testing it before it even launched, and I really like it a lot. Uh, the big question, though, is right now, it's rumored that Twitter is in negotiations to buy TweetDeck for as much as $50 million. And if they do buy them, then they have their own uh, iPhone app and other clients, and they obviously don't need two. So as good as this is, uh, you know, it raises a question if, if that acquisition yeah. goes through. I mean, I suppose the question is which one survives the, the sale. So this is actually, it's a really cool interface. I worry that it's a little too complex for even the average Twitter user. Uh, the, I, I got rid of a lot of the tweet decks and all like the tweet pokes and all these other weird apps, and I only use the Twitter app now on the iPhone. This is compelling enough that I may go back to it, but I always I always had issues with the uh, with the various panels and different logins and things. If if Twitter buys it and makes it their default app, uh, I think that'd actually be pretty cool. Right. I mean, another another cool thing that I like about this is. Uh, when you respond to someone, uh, you know, you, you get sort of all of these auto, um, you, you get these tags up top where that, that show you, uh, you know, like if I do add John or something, you get, you, you have auto complete them, yeah, and a number of things. And auto complete. So fly so, or so, die on that. I think it's, well, <laughs> it's definitely a fly if uh, the product remains. Whether it dies or not is really up to the business, um, you know, mm -hmm. outcome of, of these negotiations. I, I, I have a hard time seeing the product uh, you know, surviving an acquisition. I, I, think, I think it would survive the acquisition. I think some of the DNA of it would go into the main Twitter app. I'm giving it a fly as well in this case. Okay. So that's a fly. Next up is uh, Sound Tracking, which is an app that launched at uh, South by Southwest. And it's a very simple app where you, know, you can just uh, you can be listening on your iPad, on your, I on your iPod, a song, or you can search for a song if you're like at a at a at you can a tag concert. a song, yep. And you can you can do searches for songs, and then you tweet out or send out to your Facebook, um, you know, friends. I'm listening to this song, and there's a link with a uh, sort of you know a, a sample, a 30 to 60 second sample, a la iTunes. Uh, and it's just a really kind of quick and easy way to share with your friends what you're listening to. And the, mm -hmm. the app has you know, been downloaded 250,000 times. It's now my question popular. is: Do my friends care what I'm listening to? Well, that's. <laughs> that's I, I don't. I don't particularly need to listen to your soundtrack. You know, I don't think it matters if your friends care. I think it's all. You know, there's this, all this peacocking that's going on. All these other apps. It's like, do people really care what pictures that you've taken uh, of your kids yeah, on Instagram? Do the they pictures, care about your, the, your status? The pictures are a little more lively. This is like I really like Journey. That's true. I right? mean, that's like that's everybody loves Journey. So that's like you're basically saying that you're just saying that about everybody. Well, it, it, it's there is this big question. I think that I think that that it it, it remains to be seen whether uh, you know it's appropriate to 
um, share this stuff on different social networks. Like I yeah. think on Facebook it's okay because it's your friends, but on Twitter people might get annoyed. And you can't actually listen to the song. You just listen to an excerpt of the song. You can you, buy the song. Right. You can buy the song. It's a great promotional mechanism for for the music. I don't think my friends care, and I think they would be frustrated if I kept on telling them I listened to, say, the Black Eyed Peas over and over again. Well, that's just because you I have really, really bad musical taste. Yeah, I mean, that's obvious. That's obvious. This right. is this is trying to be like the Instagram of music. I'm giving it a die. You're giving, you're giving it a die. I'm giving it a fly, and just because I've been surprised at the reaction of, uh, you know, I shared a song this this uh, morning on Twitter, and I expected everyone to kind of yell at me, why are you sharing, you know, why are you littering the Twitter stream with your songs? I'm not following you for your musical taste. But then, you know, people start following my... Uh, well, you love Christina Aguilera. I do love Christina Aguilera, yes. Uh, you know, now, now, and then I get a message, you know, so-and-so is following the soundtrack of your life. I, I have no idea who that person is, but it's just mm -hmm. like Twitter, right? People follow you for, for different reasons. So you're the DJ of your, of your destiny. I'm the DJ of my destiny. I'm, I'm giving it a fly. All right. All right. Okay, our last product is Zapped, and uh, this is an iPhone app that makes it really easy to publish websites right from your iPhone. And so I've already published a few, or a picture of my son, we went on a hike, you know, you add some text and then you add publish and like, you know, I could take a picture, you can, you can take a picture or get one from your library, you know, snap a picture of the studio here and then publish it. And then, um, you know, so there it is. And then if you refresh, it should be in the back there. And then some, you know, you can send a link through Twitter or Facebook and then uh, all your friends will see. So to be clear, you choose your theme, you choose everything about this website from this app. You never actually have to log into Right. Even a, a, a PC or anything to, to use the browser. Right. You've got different themes and you have, uh, you know, you, 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 you publish the whole thing from your, um, from, from your browser. So just like Tumblr made it easier for people to publish blogs, this is making it even easier for people to, to publish basically blogs or websites um, and that are, you know, that look pretty good with the theme and the design. But everything is done from from your your phone. You know, you take the picture, you take you put in the text, you um, you, you can add a link, and that's pretty much it. And then you can you update. You know, as soon as you publish it, it's it's on the web. And you can send out a link, and mm -hmm. people can see it. I mean, I think it's pretty cool in terms of. I mean, just as Tumblr and Postgres and those guys, they kind of revolutionized blogging, uh, microblogging almost. This allows you to make even microblogs for microblogs. You basically can go to the zoo and make the zoo mm -hmm. page. Uh, that sort of thing. So that's great for sharing for, with parents and things. You're saying that it could also be used a little more for formal blogging. I'm not sure how how much that might be used, but I suppose that's a, that's a possibility. I'll give this one a fly. Well, I'm, I'm definitely giving it a fly. You know, it, it's already been downloaded, I think, almost 250,000 times on uh, iTunes in just a couple of weeks, and it's uh, was featured. It's really taking off. So, you know, look, look for it. It's called Zapped. And... Uh, and uh, do we have a guest? Oh, there he is. Oh, who do we have here? Can you? Hi, guys. Hi. Is <laughs> this is Kelly Smith, the uh, founder and CEO of Zap? Okay, Kelly. This is. Uh, thanks for joining us. I hope you can see us okay. I can see you fine. Thanks for having me. So you just launched us a couple weeks ago. What's been the reaction? Well, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, it's uh, probably the most popular new app submitted in the month of April. Um, we're, we're at about, as you said, about 250,000 downloads. Uh, we're running about 10,000 a day right now. Um, <clears throat> so we're relatively new, but um, the results have been great. And, you know, being the designer of the product myself, I'm especially uh, happy about uh, the reviews, uh, uh, both in the, uh, the App Store as well as uh, uh, on Twitter and everything else. So we're, we're really excited. And, and what's your main? What was your main sort of design goal here? I mean, we talked a lot about how you know this is kind of like really making publishing even simpler than it, than it has been already. People talk about Tumblr, you know, making it easier for blogging, and this this seems to be like one more step in that sort of progression. Well, yeah, I mean, there was a couple of things uh, that uh, that made this you know uh, an exciting effort for me. Um, you know, the issue with a lot of the systems that are currently out there, especially people uh, who use these, know. Um, you know, blogs are really great for just you know continually adding streams and streams of content into the same uh, into the same site, but there is really no good way to create uh, multiple uh, websites for different stories or different chapters of your life that aren't really related to each other. Um, and so, you know, the issue with the blog is it sometimes feels like too big of a commitment. And I wanted to make you know really 
uh, this short, bursty, impulsive system uh, that would allow people to share stories of their life that just aren't really associated with some big, long-running blog. And so the content uh, uh, creation machine you're carrying around in your back pocket all the time is great for you know, a family vacation uh, one week and a birthday party for uh, your one-year-old the next. And that's, I think it better reflects how we, how we live our lives. So is that your differentiating point? I mean, I, I guess, as Eric said, this is, this is an easy way to blog, but it, it seemed to me that this is a great way to like capture moments in a blog format. So was, uh, rather than being like a Tumblr where you post like goofy pictures or like a posturist where you have a long, long, long stream, this is a one-off blog essentially, correct? Uh, you could call it a blog. I mean, it's certainly true. You know, today there is no really good way to very quickly and very, very easily take mixed media, whether it's text, URLs, and pictures, and bend all those things into a story that captures, uh, you know, a weekend outing. There's just no good way to do that today. And if you've used WordPress, you've used Tumblr, uh, you kind of know that. And it's also hard to create multiple tumbles using the same username and password, you know, using the same account. They just weren't really designed for that. So Zap is about letting you create a neat, styled, themed website that has permanence uh, really kind of impulsively. Uh, but the thing that a lot of people don't notice, which is the thing I'm most proud of, is that when you make a Zap, you're also instantly making a completely optimized version of the website for the iPad, for the phone, and for the computer. They all look the same, but in fact, they're all coded up differently to function exactly right for those devices. So Zaps reflect the tried device world that we live in. Um, and I don't think anybody else hit it from that angle either. So, so the, the, one, the one weakness that I see in it is that you, they all have these weird Zap URLs that you know you can't really find unless somebody shared it with you. So how discoverable are these sites uh, beyond the social circle of the people who, sh who you know you share it with? That's a really great question. Um, you know, as a product designer, we torture ourselves. You know, when is version one sort of ready? When do you stop building things? Um, right now that we've pushed the core product out, we're obviously working on the viral loop things, things like comments, fading, following. And of course, the ability to create custom subdomains. Um, so okay, that's, so that's coming, coming very soon. Comments are coming this week. And also this week, we didn't announce it, but you can now log into zap.com and edit any of your zaps in a website uh, that you initialize from the phone or vice versa. So if you want to add more copy later when you get home uh, from, say, a ski trip, you can easily do that. So all those viral loop things are coming. But the thing about Zap that I want people to know is we initialize this project for the phone from day one. It's not an afterthought. So we thought about the number of tasks, we thought about the experience, and uh, we're glad people like it. I just think it's really easy and fun to use. Okay, great. Well, uh, congratulations on the launch, and thanks for joining us uh, here on Fly or Die. Cool. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks. And that's all the time we have. Uh, join us next week for our next episode. Thanks for watching.